Hi, I'm David Greenbaum, one of the reference librarians at Clayton State. Welcome to the special social distancing video version of my library research and information literacy session. I've broken what would be a single in-class session into five shorter videos. This is the first in the series, and today I'm going to talk to you about different search strategies you can use while searching library tools. In later videos, I'll talk about different kinds of information sources and which tools you can use to locate them. We'll take a live look at the library homepage and conduct searches using those tools. I'll talk about critically evaluating the information sources you find. And finally, I'll discuss how and why to cite your sources and avoid plagiarism. This section is on searching. There are two major search strategies you can use, and there's an appropriate time and context for each. I usually recommend starting with a keyword search and then moving from there to a subject search. Keyword searching is the first strategy. It's flexible because it can accommodate any words you care to search on. It's also fairly intuitive, although you can fall into the error of thinking the computer actually understands English which it very much doesn't. It's just treating your words as strings of letters. Keyword searching is a good way to begin your search because it's broad rather than deep, by which I mean you're likely to retrieve a large number of results, but those results may not be super focused. Keyword searching is probably familiar to you if you've used Google or any other web search engine, but there are some ways that you can make it more powerful. First, Start by expressing your search topic as a question. This also helps you to think about whether your topic is too broad or too narrow for the scope of your project. You don't want to be writing a five-page paper on a question that could reasonably take a dissertation to answer, or vice versa. Next, pull out the two or three most semantically relevant words. Again, because computers don't speak English, these are the only words that really count. Then. Think of related words that you can switch in as alternates to the search terms. Synonyms, broader or narrower concepts. Basically, any other words an author might use when talking about the topic. When you enter your terms into the various search tools, you'll use Boolean operators to combine them in various ways. Boolean operators are named for George Boole, a 19th century logician. There are a lot of them, but in the library world, we mainly use and, or, and not. And is the most commonly used one. It returns only those results which contain both of the terms specified. So for example, if the left-hand circle represents all those items containing the word microloans and the right-hand circle all those articles containing the word women, then the shaded area in the middle is items with both words present. In many search tools, if you just put in two terms without any operator connecting them, the search defaults to anding them together. You can see that the results are narrower than what you'd get by searching either term in isolation. By contrast, OR expands your search. If you have two terms and you really don't care which of them are present, you can include both by using OR. This is useful if you want to look for related or synonymous terms, or if a word has variant regional spellings and you want to include both versions. NOT is actually not all that widely used, but there are some specific cases where it's useful to have. If you've done some searches and your results are cluttered up with irrelevant items that are all similar in some way, maybe dealing with an alternate sense of one of your search terms, for example, you can use not to eliminate that clutter. So, for example, if your search for Global South kept returning articles about Australia, a developed name, you could use not to eliminate them. There's a danger that you'll eliminate some useful results even if they just happen to mention your excluded term in passing, though, so it's best to use the not operator sparingly. Just as a side note, I want to point out how I put the phrase Global South in quotation marks here. That's because without the quotes, the search tool would convert it to an AND search, Global AND South, and return items that contain both of those terms anywhere in the record. By putting quotes around it, 
you're specifying that you want that exact multi-word phrase, and the computer treats it as a single unit rather than multiple separate words. After you've run a keyword search, you will probably have found a few useful hits among a larger list of more off-target resources. That's what I meant about the keyword search being broad rather than deep. If you want to focus in tighter, you can then proceed to a subject search. The subject terms are usually found when you open up the item record in a catalog or database. Subject terms are assigned by a human as being specifically something the work is about, rather than just a word that may be mentioned in passing as keywords might be. Subject terms also group all the different terms that can refer to a topic under a single unified category. This is called a prescribed vocabulary, and it means that it doesn't matter what terms the author uses, they can all be retrieved together. In this case, you can see that the prescribed term for our microloans search is microfinance, a term we hadn't thought to look under before. Clicking on that microfinance link will then pull up a list of all the other words that have been categorized with that subject term. As you can imagine, this will give us a smaller set of results than the keyword search we performed first, but the results will be much richer for us, as they'll all have to do with the topic. It's also worth noting that different library tools will each use their own prescribed vocabulary, so a term that appears in one database may be different in another, or in the library catalog. You'll want to check each tool you use to discover what are the proper subject terms to use. That's it for this section. In the next section, I'll talk about the different types of information sources available to you and what tools the library offers to search for them. Thanks for tuning in. And as a reminder, the librarians are available to help you even when we're all in our own spaces. You can reach us by phone, by email, or via live chat from the library homepage. Bye for now. See you next time.